in here we sold to this guy here so when you see the buyer coming in at that stage there's my short you can see the market makers absorbed that that buying and you can see also the double d level has came off nicely on that trade we've got that what the hell of a drone there so you can see the double d levels came out of that trade very very nicely as well so that was fabulous so when it came up to retest i'm obviously very aware of the fact that we're now looking for that short sell we're now looking to try and get back in again. And we see this uh, very, very nice flush candle here. Good order flow, uh, re, uh, re, re sell into that. So we get this refreshed order book coming back in again. You can see we get a little bid coming in here. The double Ds is starting to come back out again here. And I took a lean against that 106 contracts. Yeah. As any local would do, take a lean against 106 on that refreshed order book on a sweep. And remember, that's in line with the fact that we had this uh, value diversion. Now, remember, I'm looking at the NASDAQ here. This trade here was on the S&P because I was getting the right characteristics on the S&P. And remember, I was pulling away my bids across the spreads. So obviously what I did in that case on the, on the S&P case was I started to drive my S&P offer into the markets, didn't I? So I ended up driving my S&P market uh, offer into the markets. And when I drove the S&P offer into the markets, I was able to then meet the price head on into that car smash, into that bullish buyer, into that trapped buyer. And I managed to get a swing, which was obviously just bagged a, you know, just bagged a $2,300 profit on a five. Is there anything difficult or unusual about that trade? Anything unusual, anything difficult? Nothing at all, is there? There's nothing that you guys don't have to make that trade decision. It's very, very easy to make that call, isn't it? You see how slow the price was up into this area? Because what's missing from that chart? What's missing from that chart? Well, there's a lot of narration missing, but what else is missing? Did you see that the price balanced down here for ages? Yes or no, is that from yesterday's classroom? So the price balanced up here for a long time, and then the price balanced in here for a long time. Is that price lower or higher than the last balance? It's lower, right? So if that's lower than the last balance area, I should be able to make money by selling on higher prices, right? So where is that higher price? Well, either it's top line, depending upon what kind of auction we're coming into, or or it's a rebalance price, right? So what's a rebalance price, guys? What price did you all have on your charts for the NASDAQ rebalance price? And don't say you never had a NASDAQ rebalance price. My God, we did that in classroom a short while ago. Your rebalance price was this price area here, wasn't it? That's your NASDAQ rebalance price. So when the price came up to, to rebalance into that area, we're now looking to see the type of movement. Look at the fast money, slow candles, getting slower and slower and slower into the top edge. So obviously the offer came down to meet that, that uh, trade. That's the trade I took, not on the NASDAQ. I took it on the S&P because I thought it was sharper and cleaner. And I took the short and I made the monies, made the big monies. The target price, well, you reached it. There's your short cover and a nice place to bag and tag some monies. Everybody agree that that is exactly how you're supposed to trade on every trade you take. A few a few problems today. There's a few fundamental problems today. If we look at, for example, credit spreads, you can see that credit spreads have widened significantly this morning. And uh, with credit spreads widening considerably this morning, I've got to be very, very mindful of the fact that credit spreads are very wide this morning. And, um, you know, they got even wider when we got this big buy side pop here. So I'm very aware of the fact that credit spreads market looks a little bit dangerous just now for equity highs. So uh, I like the storyline 
And if we look at the gamma, you can see that the gamma was starting to diverge hard, making the bottom edges a little bit slippier. I'm not saying the gamma is uh, bearish, but certainly at that price, it's bearish. And, um, you know, fair value in the gamma just now puts this price around about this half back at uh, 580s. When we look at the correlation components, we can recognize that these are pretty bearish as well. Correlation components are sell side business, top line. And uh, with that dispersion short coming in, obviously it makes life a lot of easier to get the short sell on. So, yep, nice trade, nice outcome, easy money, and another several thousand dollars on a five lot bagged and tagged into a tidy little bottom edge price. Very, very good, guys. Very exciting. I'm sure you got it. I'm sure you saw it. I'm sure you were playing in those areas. We did call it live. We were talking about it before it happened. Uh, so I'm sure you were able to perhaps, perhaps participate in a little bit of that action. Certainly hope so.